In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the shift list component. The shift list component offsets items in a list based on the supplied offset value. It has three input parameters. List to shift, numerical offset value, and the wrap option similar to the previous components that we discussed. So let's connect the char sequence uh, output to the list input. Um, as always, I'm going to grab a panel so that we can read the output. So this is pretty straightforward. You can see that uh, in the initial list, the first item on the list is letter A. And uh, in the shift list output panel, the first item on the list is uh, letter B while the letter A is now the last item. By default, the shift value is set to 1. That's why the list has been shifted only by one item. There are many ways how we can supply numerical value here. Now we're going to right click on the input, choose set integer, type in number 2 and click commit changes. So now the output list starts with letter C. And if we look uh, into the initial list, it's two items shifted forward. Let's make the shift offset value visible on canvas for clarity reasons. For that, I'm going to use panel. Let's now go ahead and talk about the last input option, which is wrap. So again, very similar to the previous two components that we have discussed. If we look at the shift list output panel, at the end, you can see two letters A and B, and these are these two items shifted uh, from the initial list. So this is because the wrap option is turned on. So in this uh, particular component, wrap option keeps the uh, list length um, the same as the initial list. Let's go under sets list and grab list length component. This component gives us uh, the ca um, count or the number of items in a list. And uh, here I'm going to grab a panel as well so we can read that output. So again, the shift list uh, component out outputs list that has 10 items and also the initial uh, char sequence list length is also 10 items. I'm going to go under params and grab a boolean toggle and change wrap option from true to false now. And you can see the difference. So if we shift a uh, list by two items and the wrap option is turned off or set to false, then we reduce the number of items in the output list. So now the shift list component outputs uh, a list with only eight items in it. When the wrap option is turned off, the shift list component doesn't loop through the initial list. And this is how the output uh, list is being reduced. The number of items in the output list is being reduced corresponding to the offset value. Let's now do a quick exercise using the shift list component. I have already prepared the setup for this exercise. I have started with two circles, one of which is moved um, up or by Z value. Uh, both of these circles have uh, adjustable radius sizes. And uh, of course, for the second one, I can also change the magnitude for Z vector as well. Then I'm dividing these circles um, in the, by the same amount of points. That's why I'm using only one slider. And then I'm also using display points to preview the order in which these points are stored within their lists. I'm turning off the preview of these two divide curve components so that we only see the indices of these points. 
let's now create lines connecting points in both of these circles or both of these lists. Let's go under Curve, Primitive, and choose Line Component. And then let's input the Divide Curve Component outputs to the A and B inputs. These lines are created by connecting points with the same indices in both lists. So 0 with 0, 1 with 1, 2 with 2, and so on. But what if we want to connect 0 with 1, 1 with 2, 2 with 3? Well, then we could use the shift list component. Let's have a look uh, how it could work here. So let's go grab the shift list component under sets and then let's pick a list one of the lists i'm going to choose the second one then connect the point output to the list input in the shift list component i'm going to use number slider to define the shift um, offset value and let's type in from 0 to 10 click enter and um, I think for the visual purposes, I'm going to go under params and also grab boolean toggle and connect it to the wrap option and then double click to, uh, to sh make sure that the wrap option is turned true. Let's have a look at the list order. I'm going to use point list component here and I'm also going to switch to a preview selected geometry, only selected geometry. So you see now that as soon as I change the offset value, uh, indices are rotating, so to say, in this list. Now it's time to reconnect these lines. So the first list stays the same and then we grab the values for the B input from the shifted list. Okay, so now comes the exciting part. We can actually create surfaces from these straight line generators. Let's go to the component palettes under surface, freeform, and choose loft component. And in this case, we also gonna need loft options. So again, go back to the component palettes under surface, freeform, and choose loft options component. We are not gonna discuss this loft options uh, component in detail in this tutorial. We only gonna focus on this first option which is closed loft and we're going to use boolean toggle to set this value to true okay so we have now created a single sheet hyperboloid surface i encourage you to keep exploring and uh, experiment with this definition further we have now finished covering the shift list component I hope you have enjoyed the loft exercise as well. In future tutorials, we're going to continue talking about data lists, their organization and management in Grasshopper. I will see you then.